So did you know that recruiters use LinkedIn to get a better sense of who someone is professionally before they even ask for their CV? Now, LinkedIn is actually one of the largest business-to-business -business social media platforms. So it's important that you keep your profile professional, but always up to date so that any recruiter that's looking for a set of skills that you potentially have knows that they can find you. So if you're looking to make sure that your profile stands out, stick around because in this video, I'm gonna share with you four key areas that are important for you to regularly keep updated so that you are searchable and that you're always presenting your best professional self. Hey guys, my name is Mutlali Baile. I'm a young talent specialist and I use this platform to always give tips and tricks to graduates and young professionals on how to get corporate ready. Now in this video, like I said, we're going to be speaking about the four different areas that are important for you to always be mindful of when you are putting together your LinkedIn profile. And as recruiters, sometimes before I even ask for someone's CV, I head over to LinkedIn and I check them out. I check out what they've been doing. What have they been posting? What is their experience? Before I even reach out. So from a headhunting perspective, this is one of the best places and best search engines for all recruiters. So you need to make sure that your LinkedIn profile is kept up to date and ensuring that you're at the top of the pile when a recruiter is searching for particular skills. Now, one of the first things that we look at is your profile picture. This is one of the areas that you can really make sure that you're presenting your best professional self. Now, when it comes to your profile picture, you need to make sure that it's bright, it's clear, it's a recent picture, and it's a high resolution picture, right? The importance of this profile is that it's really showcasing a bit of your personality through the picture. For those of you that have seen my CV template video, I speak about why I prefer having profile pictures in CVs, and it's for exactly the same reason. It's an opportunity to present yourself in a professional manner. So the way your photo looks is actually very important. And smiling is a great way of really just showcasing your personality. A lot of people like to look overly serious and overly stern. And actually there's an app called Photo Feeler, which people are using these days to get a sense from people what their profile pictures actually look like and what their profile pictures actually communicate. So check out this particular website. And what you need to do is whatever your LinkedIn picture is, upload it on there. And then what that allows is that people then comment on your picture based on three different criteria that really gives you a sense of what people's initial perceptions are when they see your profile picture. So the things that you must be mindful not to have in your picture is a very busy background. Make sure that you're not wearing shades in the actual picture. Make sure there's no sign of you smoking or drinking in the picture as well. Make sure your lighting is great and also just make sure that it's not a picture of you being on holiday, right? So always think about this. It is a social media platform, but it's for professionals. And this is where recruiters go to search for people that they are looking for, for professional reasons. Another quick tip is that you can also update your background picture as well. This is the longer frame just above your actual headshot that also is generally just set to default mode, but it's something that you could actually update and make sure that it reflects a nice bright background and it reflects what it is that you do. So for instance, you could go onto a system called Canva and you could just type in LinkedIn banner. And as you type this in, there's a lot of free options that you could be using to update this section of your LinkedIn page so that it also is something that is clean, updated, and is not something that's just left to default mode. The second section that's important for you to know is just under your profile picture is your headline, right? So this is where you start putting together your job title, you start putting together some key adjectives to describe what it is you do professionally and some of your expertise. Now, a lot of people will say, just put your job title in the company that you work for. But what I think is also key is making sure that you are putting some key adjectives that maybe don't come up in your job title that are key to the skills that you already have attained. So instead of just putting together your actual job title, you put your job title, you put the company you worked for, but you find two or three key adjectives that really describe 
who you are overall that is not going to be included in your job title, right? So as people search for you, what do you want to be known for? What are some of the key skills and expertise that you have that you want to be known for? You can update your headline with some of that so that as recruiters search, they may not search your actual job title, but if they research one of the keywords that you have, then you will still come up as one of the people that they find. Now, the third section is your about summary. So this is your professional summary that you have. And it's so important what you put together in your professional summary. This is where it's important for you to really make sure that you are creating it in a way that says, what can I do for you, right? The orientation needs to not be about myself and who I am, but it needs to be, this is what I can do. These are the skills that I have. This is how my skills can solve these particular problems, right? So the way in which you put it together really needs to articulate what is it that I'm bringing to the table? What is my value add? What are the things that I'm really good at and how does that solve particular problems, right? So you need to be focused more on that than anything else in this particular section. So it's important to include here some of your key skills, some of your key strengths, and really articulate it in a way that says, how do I help people or companies grow? So the next thing is that you can add some social proofing. And by social proofing, this is really where you can get a little bit more creative in terms of being able to prove what it is that you do, right? So if you've got a blog or you do YouTube videos or you have a website, right? These are areas where you can then link all of those things to your profile so that people are able to really get a deep dive into the kind of work that you do and get a better sense of who you are in just this one platform. Now, if you ask me, this is definitely going to overtake a resume and a CV very, very soon. Because in a CV, you can only write so much, but this is really becoming such an interactive platform that allows people to really get a holistic feel of who an individual is. And if you've updated your profile well enough, this is going to be a game changer for you and is really something that's going to differentiate you in the job market. Now you may be asking, what is the key difference between a CV and your LinkedIn profile? A CV generally is tailored to a particular role. Now you'll remember from the CV template video and many times where I do speak about CVs, your CV needs to be tailored towards the role that you're applying for, right? But your LinkedIn profile is a general overview of who you are what you've done, what you're interested in, what are your key skills, what are your expertise, and you can add some social proofing to really give someone a holistic experience of who you are as a professional. Now, the last section that I think is also important for you to keep updated is your work experience section. Now, in this section, it's important for you not to just copy and paste from your CV in terms of your experience and your skills and responsibilities and expertise. It's important for you to keep this short and sweet and straight to the point, right? If people want more detail, they can go to your CV to get a bit more information about what are some of the key responsibilities and key tasks that you've been involved in in particular roles. But for LinkedIn, it's important for you to keep it short and sweet and you always want to keep some level of intrigue about you and you want people wanting to take that next step to invite you in for an interview so that they can get to know you and get to experience you a bit more. So make sure that under this section you've got your title, you've got the company name, you've got the dates in which you worked at that particular company and you've maybe got one or two key responsibilities that really give an overview of what this role actually entails and make sure that you're also highlighting some of your key achievements in that particular role. So those are some of the key areas that I think are important for you to always be mindful of. There are one or two others that you'll find other recruiters potentially saying are important, but if you really want to make your profile searchable, these are the four main areas that are important to you. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a like, make sure that you're subscribing and hitting that notification bell for more videos that are really gonna help you stand out and allow you to start taking more ownership of your career. Now, finally, as a bonus point, it's important for you to keep your contact information updated as well, right? Not everyone wants to have both email address and cell number available on such a platform because it means anyone can then just contact you. So make sure that you pick between the two, at least one of them that you comfortable with that you're happy to leave on here so that people can then contact you directly. Yes, people can message you in your actual DMs, 
There's also a recommendation section that people will speak about. But generally, for graduates and young professionals, there's not a lot of people that you've worked for that can give you recommendations. But if you have worked in a corporate environment long enough, it's great for you to get one or two people starting to give recommendations as just that extra layer of validation of the work that you do. Thank you guys for joining me once again on another video that's helping you get corporate ready. And please do comment below if there's any other question that you want to know about from a LinkedIn perspective. I'm happy to go through other features if you'd like to know that a bit more as well. But if you're wanting to stand out and wanting to take more ownership of your career, making sure that you are someone that is searchable, making sure that your profile is professional, these are the key four things that if you were to change this, it's really gonna make a huge difference in terms of how you show up on this professional platform. Thank you.